Welcome to the Best Professional Video Editors Review, 2014. Adobe Premiere Pro CC Introduction Adobe has entered a new chapter, one where you don't own your software anymore, but rent it from them, and pay a monthly subscription to keep using it. The whole concept of software is changing and it might be having some radical benefits, like what happened with Adobe Premiere Pro CC version 7.0. Although a minor increase in version number, many improvements have been made to the software that will make your editing easier and faster, and isn't that the whole point of a video editing application? Premiere Pro is already an extremely competent app, which allows you to work with practically any clip you'd care to throw at it, so what little nuggets have Adobe offered its legion of editors with this new update? Many of those new features are quite small, but their value lies in what they help you achieve, and they're all much welcomed and needed improvements. Titles You can spend time creating one that looks exactly right, but duplicating it as an independent title so you can use the exact same style elsewhere along your timeline is now child's play. Hold down the option or alt key depending on your computing platform to create a new, unique instance of the first title, which you can then alter without those changes being copied back to the original. This may not sound like much, but if you work with titles a lot, you may well appreciate this greatly. Subclips Another small change is what Adobe have done with subclips. These are not independent clips, but linked to a longer one, and are used most often to isolate parts you might be interested in without having to scroll through the whole original to find them again. When creating a subclip, you now have the option of being able to alter its and dash and out points later on. Pros It's obvious that Adobe are determined to make Premiere Pro the best editing choice for filmmakers, and their constant refinement of the program, while keeping it as stable as it is, is extremely good news for the community. Some changes are playing catch up with the competition while others move it forward. There's nothing groundbreaking here, just little touches which should make our editing jobs a little easier, and hopefully allow us to finish a project, before the early hours of the morning for once. It's the number of changes, over the whole interface and editing process, which makes this update so appealing. It makes us feel like Adobe are listening to their customers and this can only be a good thing. Cons Being able to own the software would be great, as opposed to merely renting it. The price may be attractive but Adobe locks you into yearly commitments and the moment you decide not to pay for it, your app will no longer work. How attractive this is to people, only time will tell, but not only could it cause, some who are uncomfortable with the idea to shop elsewhere, it destroys any chance of reselling your copy should you no longer wish to edit with Premiere in the future. You do get the benefit of getting the latest updates as soon as they're released, which will be a change for some editors, who buy an app, and keep it for as long as possible, before feeling the need to upgrade to the latest and greatest. But apart from that, there's really not much to complain about. This is a solid update which brings many advantages. It works on multiple platforms, and it holds its own on older machines, unlike certain whiz-bang programs from the competition. Avid Media Composer Avid Media Composer has been the industry standard in non-linear editing for television and film for over a quarter century. With their latest version of the Media Composer family and lowered price, Avid appeals to a broader market. Anyone who has watched network television, or been to a major motion picture, has seen the results of Avid Media Composer. Whether you re an Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or even Vegas Pro user, Avid as top-tier dominance is undeniable. As the first of the real mainstream non-linear editing solutions, Avid set the paradigm for all others to follow. The latest price point $1,000 brings Media Composer within reach of video producers from wedding videographers to major motion picture studios, and no subscription is required. Pros Media Composer 7 brings forth the next phase in the Avid Media Access AMA workflow. AMA is Avid as answer to the ability of other packages to read media in their native formats. Other packages allow video producers to import the footage and read the root files while editing. 
Then, in order to view the video in real time, you often need to render the clips in your timeline. Traditionally, Avid editors have assistant editors that transcode the footage upon ingest. This can save studios considerable dollars, as A's have a lower pay rate per hour than editors. This generation of AMA not only allows editors to reference clips in their original format, but also transcode in the background. Avid has also introduced a memory resident transcoder that will enable cue transcoding to happen with Media Composer closed. The theory is that this will allow one person to do everything seamlessly. Avid Media Access Link Dialog The theory is sound. The practice is still a bit clunky and buggy. Most of these bugs are fixed with the latest patch. However, different formats yield different results. Witty still say that transcoding during ingest is more reliable especially if you reusing a multi-editor SAN, such as Archon or the Unity family. Video producers will find that Media Composer is definitely still wicked fast when used in its traditional workflow. So, that is a major pro. Finally, the biggest criticism by Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro users is also a plus. The standardized formats make Media Composer more stable. It as simple really? The more variants you have in formats, the more trouble you can also have. This is probably why AMA is still rough. Media Composer and Pro Tools are both by Avid, so you can use all the Pro Tools. RTAS plugins from Autotune to Reverb. The audio interface is much more Pro Tools like. They've added a master fader to, which you may also attach finalizing plugins, such as Izoto Ozone. The only things we would have really liked to see are buses, and the ability to automate levels with the sliders rather than the time-consuming rubber band method in the timeline. But overall, this is a major step in the right direction. ULL also find many of the features UV come to love in version 6. These features include 5.1 audio mixing, a more intuitive timeline, and the ability to edit in much lower bitrates for speed, and ray transcode for final at a higher bitrate offline online, or proxy-based editing. The cons as you read in the pros? Section? AMA is still not ready for prime time. It is not very reliable, and is mostly useful for roughing out your ideas. We understand the need to address the concerns from video producers in Avid as traditional workflow, but the solution here is not a completely viable answer in practice. Also, keep in mind that users' concerns may be addressed in upcoming patches. While listed as a positive for reliability, restricting resolution and frame rates aren't very practical nowadays, if Avid is truly interested in competing in other packages, respective markets, Slow motion footage is not natively interpreted as such. For instance, if something is shot in 240 FPS and imported to a 30 FPS project, it throws out 7 of every 8 frames. We first had to run the footage through After Effects, stretch it, and export it as 30 FPS so we could use each frame. As the first of the real mainstream non-linear editing solutions, Avid set the paradigm for all others to follow. Media Composer 7 does not include Script Sync nor Phrase Find, a $1,300 bundle on their own. These features were free in version 4. If this feature weren't another $1,000 to purchase for Media Composer, it would be a major plus. Avid should also consider a rework of their notorious advanced titling tool, Marquee. Some editors resort to Avid as simpler basic title tool. Summary Avid is still the industry standard in video editing in the upper echelons of the trade. With solutions such as Unity Isis and Symphony, and workflows including Pro Tools, Avid isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Although AMA is still not quite there, the new features hold the promise of easier ingestion and even quicker workflows. Don't mistake our criticism of AMA as a slam on the overall product. It is our opinion that AMA has an abundance of potential. Media Composer 7 is a feature-rich editing package that not only has its roots in the finest traditions of editing, it is the latest generation of those roots. 
we highly advise you to download and try out a free 30-day trial at www.avid.com and give it a spin. Final Cut Pro 10 Final Cut Pro 10 kicked off a storm in the Pro Video Editing community when Apple first released it. It lacked necessary capabilities they needed for their jobs. XML export and import, multicam editing, and broadcast monitor support. The third and latest update to the software brings just about everything the pros wanted, including a big one, multicam editing. Final Cut Pro 10 10.0.3299.99 .99 free 30-day trial available also brings beta support for broadcast monitors, detailed control over chroma keying, and an XML update that enables a third-party plugin to import projects from Final Cut Pro 7. With each feature restoration, Apple has not just brought parity with earlier support, but has rethought it, making it both more powerful and easier to use. Final Cut Pro 10's completely rewritten and hugely faster 64-bit multi-core code now offers richer XML import and export, the ability to store media and projects on XSAN storage, and a time-saving media stems export capability. Pros and non-pros alike will appreciate full-screen view in Mac OS X Lion, one-step transitions, pre-built movie themes, and GPU-accelerated movie export. Apple has also made a camera SDK available to manufacturers so that new devices can be final cut ready at launch, and new support for the Thunderbolt interface means editors will be able to preview edits in the field from MacBook Pros. App plugins have appeared at an unprecedented rate, according to Apple, with major ones now available from Red Giant, General Arts, and Noise Industries. The completely revamped video editor represents major strides in usability and performance over its predecessor not to mention a $700 price cut. The app's redesigned, friendlier interface is also a radical departure. For the pro enthusiasts that make up the bulk of PCM AGS readership, Final Cut Pro 10 will be a welcome change. Our review is unapologetically intended for those readers, whether they're running small video businesses, or are moving up from Apple iMovie 11 $14.99, 4.5 stars or another consumer level. Since it's such a major departure, we'll evaluate Final Cut Pro 10 based on its own features and merits, and in comparison with its competition rather than its predecessor. Pros. 64-bit and multi-core CPU support for speedier performance. Friendlier interface. Compound clips. Auditions for alternative clips. Magnetic trackless timeline. Background processing. Good organization tools ratings, tagging, auto-analysis for faces, scenes, and stabilization. Powerful new multicam support. Powerful keying features supports Thunderbolt and Studio Monitor output. Cons Can't import projects from previous Final Cut versions natively though a third-party plugin can. Custom export settings require separate compressor app. Bottom line Apple has built a completely new, faster, cleaner, and more intuitive digital video editing package. While some professionals are still kicking and screaming about the changes it brings, we predict they'll eventually be won over by Final Cut Pro 10's significant speed and usability advances. Meanwhile, prosumer video enthusiasts get a less daunting upgrade path to a pro-level Mac editor, 